Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Maitre du Temple Chapter 2 18 karat white gold. You can see and you can purchase this independent brand complete calendar automatic tonneau gold timepiece on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and of course complete pricing information for this chapter too. Now before I jump into the fit and feel of the watch ergonomics, I do want to give a little bit of background on the manufacturer. Maitre du Temple may not be a familiar name to many. It was founded in the mid-2000s by Stephen Holtzman, a watch industry veteran whose concept was to bring together master watchmakers to create collaborative efforts on each installment in the collection or each chapter. Now, the chapter one would probably have been enough to sustain the company in a world where Russian czars and 18th century French kings still walked the earth. But that remarkably complex watch quite frankly, in 50 pieces, wasn't enough to support the fledgling brand by itself. So the Chapter 2 was released, and the watchmakers in question for the Chapter 2 were Peter Speakmarin and Daniel Roth. Now, initially, when the watch came out in 2009, there was a lot of talk of the collaborative efforts of Roger Dubuis in the creation of this piece. But Roger Dubuis, back in 2012, pulled a LeBron back to Cleveland and rejoined his namesake manufacturer. Therefore, all mentions of his involvement in this watch have been animal farmed from Maitre du Temps press materials. Just know he was involved. So in terms of fit, feel, finish, let's start with the fit first. The watch is 58 millimeters from lug to lug. So in a nutshell, it's huge. It's an immense piece of white gold. Beautifully sculpted, it does have a gorgeous dynamic tension to it, but at 42 millimeters across the case from 9 to 3, not including the crown, you can already tell this watch has a huge physical footprint, and yes, a huge amount of mass. You don't forget it's there. Now, one interesting feature of the watch is it's advertised at 18 millimeters thick, but it's actually 15 millimeters thick. One of the rare instances of a manufacturer actually underselling one of the qualities of its watches. So it's a lot thinner than it's advertised, and it will fit underneath a dress cuff because, again, 15 millimeters is no longer the benchmark for excessive thickness, and it does have a nicely sloped case flank. So maybe it's not getting underneath the tightest of dress cuffs, but if you've got a wrist and a sleeve to match, this, you're probably going to have no trouble wearing it with formal attire. But as you can see from the aesthetic of the watch, this is one designed to be seen. Now, it is very heavy, as I mentioned, and you can see how the tonneau form nicely drapes itself across the wrist. Now, ergonomics are aided by a strap that is a conforming end piece leather strap, and those usually want to flare and fight the curve of the wrist. This one can be pulled straight down quite easily. Maitre du Temple understood that this would have to be a very supple and flexible strap to make this watch wearable. So although it was priced more accessibly than the Chapter 1, both of them have equal ergonomics, and the ergonomics are actually quite good for a smaller wrist if you can deal with the visual size and the sense of mass. This is a very supple alligator leather strap. It bends easily around the tight underside of your wrist. Again, very willing to flex. Now, the clasp itself in white gold is beautifully made. All of high polish, it echoes the tonneau shape of the case, which is a nice aesthetic refinement. You can see inside, though, it is rather austere in its finish, although massively built and sturdily built, you have absolutely no concerns about this popping open or being insufficient to the mass of the case. And because it is hefty in its own right, it has the happy coincidence of acting as a keel to the watch. You can see, almost like the keel of a sailboat, it provides a little bit of countervailing mass to prevent the watch from wanting to capsize on your wrist. So you don't need a He-Man wrist to wear this one securely, just to wear it with a sense of proportion. But again, it does have a gorgeous gorgeous shape to it. And the watch is surprisingly subtle in many ways. You can see the mirrored polish on each side, unexpected additional elements, the geometric center of the crown, the beauty of the lacquered barrels, which can be customized at the factory, the subtle railroad style minute track outboard of the dial, the flush fit of the double digit date wheels. This is a watch that rewards close viewing. As large as it is, it's looking to make a mailed fist impression, but it also has velvet glove versatility. And you can see how that continues in the subtle pinched use of alpha hands in white gold, not the more massive dauphines often used on these pseudo dress 
Uber watches. The Dauphine's having a mass that often corresponds to the size of the case and the impression of the watch. The use of alpha hands here is an elegant touch. Moreover, on the case back, you can see the refinement of a case graced with no fewer than six individual crystals for viewing the barrel as well as the movement. And you'll note the quick adjusters to rapidly cycle the month and the day wheels. Again, doesn't force you to do everything through the crown. There's a lot of subtlety going on here, right down to the exquisite finish of the Valche 4000 based caliber, known as the SHC01. Now, the watch is beautifully made. There's absolutely no disputing that. So again, many watches built in this size simply aren't as thoughtfully crafted. One element I want to call to attention is the mechanical refinement that's been wrought on the triple calendar. Now, the concept of the Chapter 2 was to create the world's easiest complex calendar watch to read at a glance. And I'd have to say that with the signature barrels and the double digit date, that's been achieved. But the real mechanical refinement is in just how precisely, rapidly, one might even say instantaneously, the triple date rolls over at the stroke of midnight. This kind of coordination and speed of date rollover is Patek Philippe type stuff. That is very impressive. That's impressive if you're a major industrialized watchmaker, even more so if you're a small independent. And it works flawlessly, and it's easy to adjust. The pusher adjuster on the case flank, which you can see is gracefully integrated into the swell of the crown on the case flank, allows you to easily cycle through the double digit date. Moreover, there are pusher adjusters on the reverse side, much like the Blancpain underlug adjustment system, and they allow you to quickly and easily cycle the indications of the calendar, which is nice because it breaks out the functions from the crown, avoiding the hunting that often takes place when people try to find the precise detent for setting several different layers of calendar indication. And again, no pusher adjusters to mar the flanks of the case thoughtfully done. One of the advantages of having a Valche 4000 based caliber is that it just works. There's none of the temperamental tendencies that seem to be endemic to these small manufacturers, and this one's been thoughtfully finished with input from Peter Speak Marin and of course Daniel Roth. There's no Vaucher 4000 that is finished like this leaving the Vaucher factory. Very nicely done and it has a gorgeous engraved rotor. This is an excellent execution of a very competent 50 hour power reserve dual mainspring barrel movement and yes it does feature the hacking refinement on top of the calendar refinements. You can see and you can purchase this unique chapter 2 triple calendar watch in white gold on our website.